Welcome to the technique video. I'm very excited to be sharing this with you because I realized after previous Lifebook uh, teaching sessions, I wanted to include this to really help you guys succeed at home. I mean, that's really the whole thing is that you guys get to do a year's worth of amazing art and come away with skills, with self-realization, with personal transformation. So this video, I highly recommend you watch it. If you're doing the intro, the intro is great, but I would say that technique video before the lesson will really improve the outcome of your painting, especially if you've not seen these techniques before, but even if you have. So I have here my little page and we're going to go into the basic, basic wet into wet because we're going to be using acrylic and watercolor on paper to achieve all of this. If you're not familiar with that, you can do acrylic and watercolor together on paper and it can actually have a pretty wonderful effect. I am pre-wetting the paper here. You'll notice that I'm not turning it into a pond. Um, and the reason for that is, is that the color will tend to go uh, where the water is, but you don't want so much water that fish can swim in it. I'm gonna grab one of my uh, very favorite colors. This is my nickel Ozo yellow. And I'm gonna touch this to the paper and you're going to see some beautiful blending. For the clouds in the background, we're gonna be using this technique, the wet into wet technique. I'm gonna get some quinacridone magenta and I'll come here. And it's about doing two things. One, creating very irregular shapes when you're gonna be doing these clouds, very irregular shapes. And also allowing the paper to fully rest and recover. Um, when your paper is wet and the pigment is traveling through it, it has a journey to, to, to take, really like you have a journey to take, it has a journey to take. And in this journey, it's going to go into the density of the paper. It's going to go through the fibers. It, these pigments will continue to move into each other. So if you dry it and work it too quickly, you don't get to full, really fully realize what the paint is going to do. So you can see I just come here and where I put the color is where it goes. Uh, the fact that it's wet. Uh, allows the pigment to travel both through the water and into each other and into the paper a little bit easier. Now, I'm using Core Watercolor. Core Watercolor has a lot of flow agent in its formulation. If you're using what uh, some artists will refer to as a tighter color, which means it doesn't flow as easily, you might want to use a flowing agent like Oxgall to get the same blooming effect. And you'll hear me talking about blooming in the video, and that's essentially what I mean. Now, Cloud lining. So the cloud lining is going to come from a couple of things. I'm going to put out some titanium white acrylic here. And I am going to get a lining brush because it's going to be about two types of paint. It's going to be about my heavy body paint and my fluid paint. Now, if you're doing craft paint, you can, um, you don't have to have to because craft paint is essentially a uh, kind of fluid, high flow, more soft bodied of a paint. So the first thing that I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to take a soft blending brush and I'll show you my favorite. This is a number 12 Princeton round blender. They're amazing. Um, if you can get one, I think they're terrific. They do a lot of wonderful blending techniques in acrylic. Uh, they're a little bit soft, which lets them do both acrylic and watercolor. And you'll notice that I'm adding water to the acrylic more than I would usually use. And I'm gonna come here to the edge of this cloud and I'll show you how to get these cloud forms in the clouds with sponge and paper part of the technique video. And I'm gonna come here and sort of more water. You can see it's very wet. When we work with the acrylic on the paper, we're gonna be doing wet into dry layering. So acrylic will work in some sense the way that you would expect watercolor to work, but it's opaque, it's layering. When it dries, it won't lift again. So you actually can marry these two very beautifully and with ease and get tremendous results, really good results. We're gonna take a small detail brush and then we're gonna come along and line a very irregular and almost lacy outline of the cloud. This is literally the silver lining in our image. So 
So you can see how we might take what is happening with the watercolor, uh, accentuate it or exaggerate it with our acrylic, and get some amazing romantic fantasy sky effects with very little difficulty. The next thing I want to talk to you about is uh, glazing. We have to do it in watercolor, and that just means putting thin, transparent layers of color over a dry previous color. Um, I have my little brush here. I'm going to put it in the water. Remember to let your brushes, uh, especially your natural hair brushes, prime in the water, soak a little bit because the hair has to pull in um, a little bit of uh, water and moisture to, for the brush to fully realize its form and technique. So I'm going to come here and I have just loaded a little bit of pink and I'm going to go right across. And you can see that the color underneath shows through. I'm going to get some ultramarine blue. And it creates a wonderful little glazing effect. And right here, where I come across the areas that are wet, you'll see that it bleeds out where it's wet, but it doesn't travel into the area that's dry. And so those are things to think about when you're trying to control what's happening with your watercolor. Where the water is, is where the color goes. And uh, this will happen in the wet applications of the paint as well. So it's just real important to know that. Now I'm gonna show you how I get some clouds going. I'm going to pre-wet my area. This is a large quill brush and you can see it's shiny to my eye, shiny to my eye, but not soaked in, in water. And I'll get some just, uh, let's just get some blue and loosely define some little clouds kind of coming out here, wiggling this around as one does. And so that's pretty good. That's pretty atmospheric, but again, it's going to continue to travel and rest. If I take a mildly damp sponge, I can come back and subtractively remove pigment from an area helping imply cloud. I can also come through with just paper towel or tissue and get a much stronger effect. Now, that still has to rest. That still has to recover as we talked about earlier. But as it softens, as it rests, as it fully dries, you'll see similar effects there where you get real sense of clouds, a real sense of that type of uh, freeform soft shape that you can then accentuate with the acrylic. I'm going to show you some grass. So I'm going to put out my phthalo green, my burnt sienna, and my cad yellow, which is most of the formulation for the grass in this particular piece. We're going to be playing with this color mixes. And I'm going to show you some things you need to know about painting better grass, because sometimes that's really hard for people. Uh, they, they don't find it uh, easy or fun or accessible. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to take an angle brush. I'm going to get it wet. And I will start out by mixing my green and my burnt sienna together, my phthalo green and my burnt sienna. On the paper, we can do a slightly wetter application of paint because the paper is very stabilizing. So when I paint the grass, the short end of my angle is going to be here and I'm going to flick out and curve out a deep value of shape. Kind of finish that off there. It's important to make sure that your brush strokes are uh, not very rigid, not very, you wouldn't want to be repetitive like this. You do want to come around and be loose and expressive with your grass strokes. You want some blades to be longer and you want some blades to be shorter. It's important to have a deep value in your grass. I'm going to kind of include this here. It's important to have that shade because the light doesn't get to the ground often. A lot of times the grass really blocks it. So the shadow is a very important factor. Now, when I come in with my yellow and I mix it into the green brown mixture that I already had, and I'll go ahead and add a little water to that, I'm going to come here and highlight some of the edges. All right, so this is the sunlight maybe getting through that. 
in in this painting i use a very small angle brush this is a quarter inch angle you can also use a detail and i will do that in the finishing part it uh it's another good way to get the technique there we go you can kind of see how we're getting those thin fine lines let's uh use a detail for the last little bit the last bit i like to take a little white into the yellow green mix and create a very light kind of sunlight is getting there mix and tip the bits of grass that would be seeing perhaps a little sunlight with that color you can see we can do this with the detail brush that's completely doable and then whenever you're finishing it's nice to go back through take some green here and make sure that you blend the highlights back in to what's going on with the grass. Just looking there. The other thing you can use is a grass comb. Just play with it. The longer you go, the better the grass will get. And so it's just about making a very wild and unruly patch of irregular lines that are a little thicker at the base and taper at the top. You want deep shadow, you want to create some value. Now dry brushing. So you can dry brush in acrylic and you can dry brush in watercolor and I'm going to show you both. I'm going to take this brush and I'm going to take all the water out of it. I'm going to load up paint. I don't want the fluid paint because the fluid paint tends to be a little bit um, wet. And I'm going to come here and just very lightly touch the paper. And you can see what I get when I do that is a little bit of pigment dusting off the brush, but the roughness of the paper shows through. If I come in with some yellow, and again, I'm not getting water or anything. I can come in and even sort of blend and dry brush using that yellow to white. You can see we do this. So dry brushing with acrylic. The brush is dry. The paint is dry. You're not including a lot of water into the mix. Very similar dry brushing with your uh, paint. So I'm not going to get some water on my brush and I'll just come into the paint which is a little bit pre-wet and you can see I can dry brush with the watercolor. I'll come here into the yellow and get some. So it's a heavier more pigmented thing than the acrylic but the difference is I'm going to get my brush wet now. When I come through the acrylic once it's dry it doesn't lift again it stays but I can come through this dry brushed watercolor, right? But you can see the acrylic stays on its own. So that is that one. Now, flowers and leaves, we'll start with the leaves. I'm gonna use, this is a number four round and I'm gonna show you just the basic strokes. You're gonna take the green and the brown like we did. This is our deep green base. I like to thin it. And the stroke is basically this right here. The first little parts of the stroke will be very small and delicate. I have to get water fairly often um, until the paper is sealed with the acrylic to get it to coat in. But you can see that even when it really goes in there and we zipper that up right, that's how we're going to get the little sprig down of leaves then when i want to lighten in i just add a little of my yellow to my green mixture you know and then you're going to give your leaves a little sunlight with a lighter color i like to give at least three values on this you know as you go up into the tree you know the brush strokes might get varied like i'll add more green they might get bigger. But again, it's just using the round here to create the tiling and texture that you would expect to see in the leaves. And you can see I can blend right on paper. So hopefully this was worth your detour to check out because I think you'll find that 
um, it's very nice. Now, in the original study, um, I did dioxazine purple, but I realized after doing it that I wanted some more bright colors. So I'm going to add just magenta, just whatever pink paint you like. It's bright pink. And a little bit of um, this purple as an option to kind of keep these. And I'll show you both. So I'm going to be back with, let's start with a little of the purple. Now you can tuck into the leaves that you've got some little color, a little bit of the purple. to kind of imply that that's in there. Or you can pull out your own little sprigs to make defined, considered little bits of flowers. If your brush isn't giving you little detailed marks, go ahead and switch to a detailed brush, which I'll show you in just a second. Show you that in just a second. There we go. So just building up that shape. Now, as I've built up that shape, and I'll show you what I mean by switching to a detail, I'm gonna get a small detail brush. And I'll take some of my purple into the white. This is the fluid white, and I do like that. And again, you could just be using craft paint. Craft acrylic paint works with heavy bodied acrylic paint. I really like Deco, especially the Americana. Let me hear. You can see I'm using this small brush. Now, I wanted brighter colors, like that was pretty good and it was pretty in the tree, but I think I'm going to come in um, and add some bright purple that's pure pigment mm -hmm. and then maybe even some pink. Little pops of color. You can always get into your high flow. And back into dark colors to add shading. So this is acrylic, this layers, it layers on itself, it layers on each other. You could do these in blue, you could do these in yellow, you could do these in pink with no difficulty. Okay, I've got my, um, Art color out. I think I'll put out some Mars black because I've got my burnt sienna right here. And we're going to talk uh, the bark and the branches and what's going on with that. Right. So, first, the base color of the bark, unsurprisingly, is black and brown together. I'm going to mix it fairly fluid because it's got to go into the paper. Now, On the body of this sort of fairy dryad tree, there's a bit of a twisting, intertwined uh, little shape, and that's sort of what defines her figures. So we want to get that there. And then also on the branches, we need to have some very delicate branches, but that also mimic parts of her that are her body. So, like, you know, if I'm doing her arm, that might be a little more thick and twisted than I might traditionally do on a tree. And then when I want to come out, I'd add delicate little de definitions. Coming on here, you can see I'm just on the toe of the brush, breaking out little moments, adding little breaks and twists. When that layer is on there, then you can come back with a little bit of, you know, burnt sienna, just even pure, or you can add some orange into it with cad red and yellow, and we'll do both in the final painting, but I just want you to understand the basics of this. So I'm gonna come here and define a couple of the twists with the lighter color. Okay. 
And then I will also define a few of the twists with this lighter color and then bring it up into some of the twigs. Now I'll add yellow into this here so we can see some different shades, right? We're gonna be doing some different shades. And again, if your bird sienna isn't bright enough, you can mix some uh, red, orange into it to help it improve. So we're gonna come over the top and pick some highlights to help the twists of that bark be defined and show. Get a little more yellow. So exaggerate the contrast to get it to show so you guys can see it. And again, I'll bring that out delicately as well. I won't forget those things. I don't want to take out my dark values because that is what helps these little twigs show. But it is nice to add little highlights to them and help them go. And you can always go even a little white into it. You can see it just builds up. That definition. Now, also with acrylic, we will do things where we start out, say, very, very wet on the paper, right? Almost putting things out in a wash, like we would with the watercolor, right? And I'm going to dry this with paper, but you might let it dry. And you can see this doesn't lift as much as it does out of the watercolor. So you can get a similar technique. It's just a bit different. I just want you to see it dry. So once it's dry, you know, I can keep layering. And just layering and layering the acrylic. As I'm going. So that's how we're building that up. So we start out with washes to stain the paper, to build up the color, and then we go there. And these are the basic techniques of this painting. So if you can get a handle on these, everything that comes, the project isn't really that massive. It isn't really that overwhelming. Um, and you'll find, you'll be like, okay, this is the sky and that's gonna go in like this. And that seems less mysterious and and less of a surprise, you'll be like, oh, I know what to expect now. So this is what's coming your direction. I cannot wait to see your version of this amazing new Dawn painting.